Hello everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Kirija, you are audible. Okay, thank you. So I guess Sir has joined. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. How Welcome, are you? sir. Thank you. So I guess we will start the session now. Right. How many people are there? Yes, sir. There are like uh, 80, around 80. Oh, great. Let's begin. Do I upload my presentation or do you want to have some introduction? Yes, sir. I'll just start. Then I'll give it over to you. So, uh, hello, everyone. I am Girija Shinde, your, your host for today's session. Good evening and a warm welcome to everyone present for today's webinar, which is on the topic rowing as a sport. So, uh, let's begin the session. CLP is fortunate to hold an extreme pride in being one of the few colleges in the world to have its own regatta. Carrying forward its legacy, regatta steps towards its 94th edition this year. We are back even stronger to present the flagship event of regatta. This year, the theme of regatta is vows of valiance. So as a part of regatta, we are organizing a webinar on the topic rowing as a sport. We are really glad to have one of the great alumnus of our college, Professor Mushtaba Lokhandwala sir, as the speaker for today's webinar. And the president of our boat club, Mr. B.B. Ahuja sir. We also have the honorable presence of vice president of boat club, Dr. N.A. Hedau sir, and respected in charge of fregata, Dr. V. Dr. V.K. Haribakta, sir. I welcome you all, sir. I would like to give a brief introduction about Mr. Lokhandwala, sir, who is the speaker for today's webinar. Professor Lokhandwala, sir, is a university topper in B Mechanical and has done his two masters from there. He has taught in various engineering colleges for 18 years. He has an extensive experience of corporate training and is is a mentor and life coach to seven CEOs. He is actively involved in sports and has umpired in six international events and lots of nationals. He is President Emeritus of Maharashtra Rowing Association and a former member of a former member of Maharashtra Olympic Association. Astronomy is his hobby and passion. He has also authored two books on astronomy that is Akashati Lapanda on eclipses and beyond the solar system on cosmology. Sir, we are really honored to have you here today. Now, I request our respected Vice President of Port Club, Dr. N.A. Hedau, sir, to speak a few words. Good evening to all the students of this Board Club. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. And uh, good evening, sir. sir. So uh, uh, this is the uh, webinar series. We have just uh, starts from this uh, week of this February 2022. And uh, in a similar way, we are trying to again conduct the webinar series by these uh, different uh, experts, those who are already uh, participated in many uh, state as well as national uh, rowing uh, sports games. And uh, simultaneously, this is the first uh, webinar series. And uh, thanks for this uh, Lokhandwala sir. Uh, he has accepted the, our uh, request, our invitations to uh, present uh, the uh, their experience, their knowledge to the CUEP Boat Club uh, students and uh, he is already the um, uh, state level as well as national level experts in these Maharashtra um, rowing games. And again, his association uh, associate with these Maharashtra rowing associations and these um, 
Maharashtra Olympic Association. And uh, uh, today, uh, these students, those who are joined in this webinar series, they are from second year student, third year student, final year student, and uh, the some uh, may be the MTech students. So uh, we are planning why it is the essential to plan this uh, webinar series. Because uh, recently, so since from this um, uh, two year back, so it is very difficult to conduct the offline rowing games in COP Boat Club premises. Because since from loose, uh, last two years, all the students, they are staying at their own homes due to this COVID pandemic situation. And due to this, the students, they are not here since from last two years. And it is very difficult to continue the events of all these uh, boat club activities without the knowledge, without the expertise, without the experience, without the practice. And uh, that's why this is the uh, good opportunity to all these UG and uh, PG students to uh, conduct the, some expertise uh, lectures through this webinar so that you can understand the all these terms related, uh, related to these rowings. And in this webinar series, the Lokonwala sirs will deliver, will explain the certain different uh, activities, different terms related to the rowing games, rowing sports. And I once again thanks to Lokonwala sirs for giving the, their expertise to our COP students. And uh, sir, thanks for once again for accepting our invitations and certainly we'll meet in the next week in the COP board clubs. Okay, sir. Thank you. So please continue yeah. the today's webinar on rowing as a sport. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this thing. Mm, thank you, Dr. Hedao. Uh, you have given me a very warm welcome. Actually, uh, this thing has to be there. Can I? Uh, can you enable the sharing of the PPT from my end, uh, admin? Yes, sir. Yes, just a second. Ah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, friends, it has been a pleasure. Some of my best days of my life I have spent at the boat club. And I carry very fond memories from my young days. Uh, incidentally, 44 years ago, I was the regatta secretary in the Golden Jubilee year. And uh, that was an amazing point. Uh, so I would like to share some of the experiences and the thoughts and I don't know if I will be able to do justice, but I would request later on that, you know, I will be open to questions because there is such a lot of uh, almost 50 years of association with rowing uh, gives me, you know, a lot of memories. So probably it's difficult to put it on the PPT or a single one hour presentation. Yeah, yes. have you allowed me? Yes, sir. yes, yes, uh, yes sir. you can share. Okay. How do I share now? Uh, this open share tray. It's opening your uh, share tray. It doesn't open my desktop. Let me check, sir, once. Hmm. By the time she is doing, uh, Girija is uh, making the arrangements. Uh, this is one thing that I would like to share with all of you that uh, COEP is the only college in the country to have its own rowing club. And that is an amazing ability 
that is an amazing privilege that all of us have and i think we must make the best of uh, that uh, opportunity to work on that kya ho gaya any problem sir uh, is it okay that one of our colleagues can share it but then i won't have control i don't know how to you know go about back and forth or whatever you yes, you can see the share option here the mic button actually mm mm i i can see the share but it doesn't show my desktop it shows your desktop and window and uh, presentation or whatever let me okay i got it yeah so okay sir yeah yeah the whole idea of uh, sharing with you is we have all gone through a very bad patch can you put me on the um, highlight me on the screen uh on the inset of the screen yes so yes, for yes, the last yes. yeah for the last 2 years um getting into the boat has been a very difficult proposition with all the protocols and covid and so many other things things have been bad and therefore uh we need to understand what happens is a coep has a tradition of, for over decades or probably now reaching a century that the seniors train the juniors now two batches have practically passed out and that legacy transfer has not happened so i appreciate the initiative by the port club by dr auja and dr hedao for uh, starting from the beginning so let's start with the question of what is rowing um yeah people are waiting i think i get the message can you put me on highlight uh, giricha so people can see what yes, yes, i have to explain certain concepts with my gestures okay so rowing is a sport of racing boats using oars there are other boats where we use paddles and those are called as canoes and kayaks now in a kayak you have two paddles on either side of the rod and in a canoe you have a single paddle but in rowing you have oars and it uh, the difference is that the rowing oars are attached to the boat using oar locks while paddles are not connected to the boat you carry it in the hand so rowing is divided into basically two major divisions what we call as the sculling and the sweep rowing in sculling the athlete or the rower has one oar in each hand and in rowing every individual has only one oar and which is held by both the hands so that's the difference sculling and sweep as it is called sweep rowing so that's the uh, first difference and these are some pictures that i have tried to um, put in so that you understand how uh, this thing is there uh, how the situation is actually here we have sculling boats there are two sculling boats that i am showing you on the top is uh, a sculling boat which is called as a single skulls where a single individual sits in a boat holds two oars which are called as skulls so we have a pair of skulls rather than so it's a uh, the skulls is a single word like scissors or pincers like that so this is swaran singh one of our very good athletes who has who is an olympian below us in the picture below we have arjun lal and arvin singhal and uh, arvin singh these two are again olympians and in the this thing then we have sweep boats am i uh, visible sachi or uh, hello yes sir yes yes you yeah. are visible sir yeah then we have uh, sweep boards what we are seeing is a coxed fours boards where we have swaran singh dattu boknal om prakash and sukmit singh 
these are also our top indian athletes wherever there is a picture i have preferred adding indian athletes because it gives us a picture of where we stand so these are called as sweep boards now we go to history the history of rowing is very old basically it began as a means of transport globally wherever there was a water body to cross it could be a lake it could be a sea it could be even uh, a river so in the picture on the left you see a boat on the ganga river and these traditional rowers which are uh, called in those areas are called as uh, you know they have different names this was a tradition carried by certain castes now some cultures especially across mediterranean sea and scandinavia made it an instrument of war on the right you see what is called as a roman trireme where they had three different layers of rowers sitting and therefore if you see closely you will see if you see it on a full screen you will see three layers of row oars and they would uh, then fight across uh, in the ships now if the ship had to go fast there had to be a good athlete uh, the rowers would have to have a good stamina and strength so they would have competitions to select the best athletes to fight the war so let's look at the brief history of rowing as a sport the earliest recorded rower was the pharaoh amen hotep second and it is recorded that he rowed in the year 1430 before common era um, this uh, as a uh, fisherman or uh, transportation has been has had a very long history however formal races started in europe in venice and were called as regattas with a single t the second t was added much later then all this was done by professional uh, rowers in the sense whose business was rowing now as a sport people whose business is not rowing were called as amateurs and that competition started in the 18th century Hello, sir. You are not visible. Sir. am i audible yes Hello? yes sir now it's audible yeah okay so uh, what happens is uh, where did uh, i uh, where did you miss me out i'll start from there yes sir uh, you were talking about adding of new t in regatta something hmm yeah addition of okay okay yeah. so uh, it started in venice now till then it was all uh, professional rowers now in because of professional rowers uh, it was not a competition it was just a this thing it was not an amateur thing so amateur competition where the rowers don't have a rowing business was started in the 18th century in england on the thames river now the first oxford and cambridge race happened in 1829 and the royal henley regatta started in 
the royalty took it over and that has become the most famous championships uh, globally it is the most watched also now to formalize this as a sport the a world body was found it is fisa it is that called as fisa it is federacion internacional the uh, society is the avion it means uh, international society of rowing avion is a french word this was the name in this it still exists it was formed in 1892 and the european championships held in 1893 fisa is a member founder member of international olympic committee which was formed in um 1896 and the first olympics were held then now and then there was a problem because there was no rowing course so the first uh, rowing has been an olympic sport since the year 1900 however till then this was restricted to mostly european countries or the western countries to make it into a broad based pay uh, competition the first world championships were held in 1962 almost six decades went before it became really a world championships let's go to rowing in india uh rowing as a sport was brought in in india by the british the first few clubs were calcutta rowing club in 1858 the royal connaught boat club in 1868 and the deccan college club i don't have uh, data about that because that club is uh, defunct by now the boat club of coep was founded in 1928 by professor bharucha who used to be present at the boat club regularly till his uh, till he expired in the 1960s around the time of founding the deccan college boat club shut down and coep took over their boats if you see all the clinker the wooden clinker boats that are there they have this word written on them salter brothers were taken from the deccan college boat club we bought them all in the bulk and some of these boats are seen here as you can see and this is a historical photograph where uh lokmanya tilak being an alumnus of uh, deccan college was photographed sitting as a cox in the tub four boats which later on we have taken over so this is a very interesting picture in the cox's position you can see lokmanya sitting there we go to the next part of the history till the 70s the major competition was um, what happened did i lose out um hmm. uh, till the 70s the major competition was arae which still exists it is amateur rowing association of the east it's a club level regatta where clubs from india pakistan ceylon hong kong etc participate basically all those even um, the rangoon all these countries which were ruled by the british before the independence that was where this thing happened rowing federation of india was founded in 1976 in the uh, i think in the month of august and mra was formed in 1977 in april coep is a founder member of mra coep and a few officers from the cme together came and formed the mra in uh, 77 then uh, india took up a major responsibility of organizing the first asian games where rowing was included it's the 9th asian games in 1982 where the where rowing was included for the first time in asia this were held in jaipur in the 
uh, Ramgarh Lake. And in these competitions, Asian Rowing Federation was formed. And that is the credit to all of us because MRA formed RFI, RFI formed uh, this thing. And India also became a full-fledged member of FISA. Around that time, I remember in 1980, when uh, in Pune we had the national championships and uh, the president of FISA visited our uh, club and he was impressed. He says, this is one of the biggest clubs that I have seen uh, anywhere. And that is a credit that goes to the vision of our founders and uh, to all of us for building it up. So what happens is this is the chain that, that is formed. COEP is affiliated to MRA. MRA is affiliated to Rowing Federation of India and to Maharashtra Olympic Association. Through both these, we are associated with Indian Olympic Association and Rowing Federation of India is also affiliated to Asian Rowing Federation which in terms is affiliated to FISA. So the chain is, there is a connection. So uh, with COEP, we have our local regatta. With MRA, we have our state championships. With RFI, we have our national championships. And Asian Rowing Federation, we have our Asian championships. And then uh, with FISA, we have our uh, world championships. So let's look at some of the events in rowing. Uh, there are events in Olympics, not all of them are there in the nationals. In men, we have single skulls, double skulls, quadruple skulls. So if you have seen, if you remember, skulls are boats which have two oars each. Each rower has two oars. So a single person is called as a single skulls. Two people rowing is called as double skulls. And four people sculling is called as quadruple skulls. And then you have uh, sweep events like coxless pairs, coxless fours, and eights. You know, the unique thing about COEP Boat Club is that it is the first uh, club in India to have had eights. We have been having them from, you know, probably 50 or 60 years before, and that has been a big history. And whenever athletes from all over India would come, they would want to row uh, in the eights. And that was something that was a very unique thing. They would say, wow, you people are lucky. <laughs> then we have lightweight men's double skulls. Then we have women, single skulls, double skulls, quadruple skulls, coxless pairs, coxless fours and eights. And lightweight women, we have double skulls. Now in nationals, we can't, you know, these are too many boats, too much of cost. So Rowing Federation of India has restricted the number of boats that we row in. And we have uh, single skulls, lightweight double skulls, coxless pairs and coxless fours. Same goes for women. And we have other two categories, juniors, which is under 19. A lot of FE students can participate in juniors and we have had um, you know some very good athletes who have won medals at the national level in juniors category in sub junior category that is under 16 uh, i don't think we can have in at least in coep we can't have uh, sub juniors so but uh, it is there for this purpose so let's look at some of the boards uh, on the leftmost, we have this uh, two athletes, Indian athletes, who are doing the double skulls. Here we have athletes from, I think, Australia who are in coxless pairs. And then we have here an Indian athlete who is doing single skulls. We have girls team who is into fours. And uh, this is a picture of on the right bottom is a picture of eights at the starting point. Eight boats at the starting point. Now, this has been uh, 
been the traditional way of uh, sorry i'll go back these have been the traditional events but now we are moving towards new events one of the most popular things that is coming up many of you have probably seen it and participated also it's called as machine rowing in the machine rowing you have a uh, an ergometer which is uh, you know uh, sort of simulates the situation of the rowing now what happens is earlier in our club also we had these weighted ergometers but then their load would not vary with the speed so right now we have uh, regular ergometer coep also has this concept 2 ergometer then there is this concept which is coming up very recently uh, we are looking at starting uh, coastal rowing in new mumbai and uh, mumbai areas and in the creeks so that is called as coastal rowing here the boats are bigger and because the waves are bigger and they have to uh, be able to stay regular rowing boats are very thin and narrow i'm sure you have seen them on the in your in the boat club and the last category is paralympics where people with physical handicaps are rowing here we have a group commander i forget his name i'm sorry uh, who represented india and on the this thing we have a double sculls team who are physically handicapped and Uh, they have won the bronze medal at the 2019 world rowing cup you see them on the right side right so we uh, i think we have covered this part of the events now we come to racing racing is done unlike yachting where you just have markers racing is done in a straight line it is done over a course of 2000 meters long with markers every 500 meters and for record purposes and for other ac uh, academic and practice purposes their timings are noted every 500 meters there are a minimum of four lanes that are required however in india it can be three lanes sometimes because not all water bodies are broad enough the lanes are a minimum of uh, 12.5 meters but usually it is 13.5 meters wide and they can be up to 15 meters wide now what happens is at the end of the uh, finishing point we need about 150 meters for the athletes to stop the boat see the boat has a momentum at the finishing point where people sprint up and that has the maximum speed at the end and they are also tired so it takes time for them to stop the boat and it doesn't so there has to be at least 150 meters behind that for juniors in india the course can be 1500 meters for sub junior and sprint races it is 500 meters the idea in introducing sprint races was to make the whole racing very spectacular all our races in uh, regatta are 500 meters roughly so this was a uh, concept taken up because most of the office bearers of maharashtra rowing association are alumni of coep um, this was introduced and then this was adapted by the rowing federation of india the lanes are marked by what is called as an albino system in the albino system you have a cable growing uh, go, passing through the under the water and there it is weighted down by small weights and on the top there is a 6 inch soft rubber ball which is tied to the lane so all the series of balls are always remain in the straight line that is called as an albino system at the start you have um, pontoons where the starters are there and the lanes are always counted the sorry um, the starter always stands behind the starting in the center and uh, 
the lanes are counted from the left of the starter. So that is how the lanes are marked. The fastest boats are always kept in the center so that their wave doesn't, uh, their wash doesn't affect the other teams. And the command that is given is attention, go. And a white flag is waved and everybody goes. Now, unlike other sports, the race, though the races are timed, these timings are not considered for records because they depend quite a bit on wind conditions. Sometimes you have a headwind, sometimes you have a tailwind. So those records are no, this thing is there. And on the bow end, the front, the leading end of the boat, there is a small ball, white ball of about uh, 50 millimeters diameter. And when that ball crosses the finishing line, we, uh, the first ball to cross the finishing line decides the winner. Now, if you see roughly the race takes about 2000 meters, takes seven um, minutes, around seven minutes. So it's a pretty fast uh, process. Now, what happens is the closest race that I have personally observed is in the Asian uh, Games, Asian Championships in uh, Hyderabad. And I was at the finishing point and to, you know, visually I could not see. So what we had to do was see the camera. What is, you know, um, finished camera. And the winner won the race by one third of the ball diameter. We had to expand the screen and see it. And that is how close that race was. It could be touch and go. And it makes a difference of a fraction of a second. Now let's go to um, these are some of the experiences. Uh, COEP has had a lot of achievers. In ARA, we have what are called as the Macklin skulls. We have had Rajendra Deshpande in 1976, Praveen Bhagwat in 1980. He was also selected in the India squad for. Asia 82. I think there was uh, a team which won the Venable Bowls also, the Coxless Pair Trophy in 1974. It was uh, Marathe and Ambekar, if I remember. And we have won single skulls gold at the national by Mangesh Kale in open this thing. And one very, uh, you know, special athlete from uh, COEP is Mr. Shirish Bedekar. Bhau, as we call him, he has won multiple gold medals in Masters, both at the state and the national level. In state, I remember the last time uh, I saw him, he had won something like seven golds consecutively. And in national also, he has won three or four golds. So these are some of our top achievers. And... Apart from that, we have won junior national gold in fours twice, probably more, but uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have the record for that. And that's 1983 and 1988. Our top team won these, uh, this thing, uh, junior national golds in fours. Now in coaches, our uh, alumni from the 61 batch, Mr. Who's no longer with us, he expired a couple of years back. He was India's first national coach in 1982 Asian Games. And I was also um, the coach for COEP team. And we won medals from 1982 to 1990. And then somehow I got busy with something else. It was a voluntary activity. I would like to revive that with uh, all of you. And uh, work on that. Then uh, international umpires, we have had Dr. Atul Gadre, who was one of our vice presidents in early 70s. Uh, Mr. Vishwas Deval who was an international umpire. Mr. Pramod Bhave, Mr. Krishna Hebrekar, who is presently the president of uh, uh, this thing, uh, MRA. Mr. Naren Kothari, who is the only 
um you know he is one of the very early international umpires who has a two digit number and is considered to be very very senior in terms of of those who are alive today or those who are still umpires today mr yogesh joshi and mr ganesh more these are some of the international umpires that uh, coep has given to the sports and then we have had office bearers mra founders among the mra founders was dr h H. kadre and dr and mr r r deshpande mr vishwas deval was a secretary general of rfi and the honorary treasurer of rfi then was naren kothari they were both there for one term and then presidents of mra from coep have been mr vishwas deval myself mr krishna hebrekar honorary secretaries mr naren kothari myself i was the secretary for almost 25 years and now mr sanjay walvi has taken over i was the member of the executive of M- maharashtra olympic association also and my term ended recently uh i think uh, this is uh, all that i had to share with you probably through uh, this thing i would like to discuss with you i will end the presentation yes sir um and uh, i will unshare it right so stop sharing yeah so what we will do is if you can uh, uh we will open the forum for questions i'll tell you there are hundreds of stories that we have had and one of our best experiences was uh, three of us um, mr uh, four of us me uh, naren kothari krishna hebrekar and uh, my friend pradeep ghumre were the youngest technical officials in the asian games and we have wow. spent wow. some of the most beautiful time there setting up things now this albino system i remember because their rule book in those days there were no social media or internet or whatever yeah, yeah. so we didn't ha- there was no even website where could we could download things we had to l- write physical letters and then the reply would come after a month so all this so a lot of innovation was open for us and this albino system we designed it and made trial and errors we had the first championships in pune under the albino system in the 2000 meters at the ban garden where the finish uh, you know the host was rcbc and the conduct was done by coep and that is the first time and then we made a lot of mistakes and we learned from that and uh in the asian games in 1982 um, a lot these international authorities appreciated our work so being students from uh, coep has been the a privilege about that so i am yes. open to questions so uh, you know probably if you ask questions i'll open up on a number of uh, topics yes sir because if you ask me i can tell you stories for a whole long month subah sham <laughs> but i don't want to bore all of you so please i would appreciate if you could ask questions uh hello yeah am i audible yes you are yeah uh, yes, yes you are audible i am professor yeah i am professor hari bhatta uh, regatta in charge along right, with uh, uh, dr hedaus sir who is basically a boat club in charge i think uh, uh, hedaus sir is also there with me uh, one question or one query what i can uh, uh, request is how can you uh, be associated uh, with the students in this particular situation uh, where you can help uh, students in in uh, getting back uh, the interest of uh, boat club because what has happened is for almost uh, past 2 years uh, students are not uh, conversant with uh, the boat club activities as such uh, head officer am i audible uh, if i'm uh, wrong yeah yeah you are very officer. clearly audible professor yeah so uh, we were basically concerned our students are also concerned because uh, two batches have been passed out 
and they couldn't basically pass on the uh, physically interact physical interaction with the students on 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 boards you can say because it was uh, probably in 2019 uh, the lockdown first started and it is now 2021 almost two years has been passed on um, uh, students weren't able to have an activity uh, on that so uh, how can you basically uh, help us in what you can say uh, bring back uh, the uh, the uh, interaction is there any help that you can yes so what happens out, is ask? i am totally available huh because this is my alma mater <laughs> So I'm willing to give as much time as is needed. And, you know, what happens is there are two things that are uh, uh, which I love. And one is my college and the other is the sport. So, you know, it will be a privilege for me to be associated with the boat club and give away all that I have learned over 40 years of my association with the sports. So you just tell me. Uh, once your uh, once the college starts offline, then what we could do is we can start off on a small way by having uh, a weekly workshop. Once we have a set of committed uh, students who want to go for uh, higher level uh, competitions, then we could make it more frequent. One experience that I would like to share with you is this uh, batch of um, you know 88 which won the gold some about five years back uh, we met after probably it was their 25th uh, anniversary of their celebration and they were telling me that uh, you know aapne itna pareshan kiya sir humko us zamane mein ke whenever in our professional life we you know i used to literally make them froth at the mouth but they mentioned that okay, whenever in our professional life we came across any problem, we always asked ourselves, Utna to bada problem nahi hai na? <laughs> then we can work it out. And that's how all of them are now CEOs of big companies. Um, you know, we have Vijay Cheda who owns a big company, Cheda Electricals. You have heard about him probably. Then we have uh, Anoop Sable, who's a director in KPIT. Um, there is one uh, Yogesh Joshi, who retired as a very senior officer in the Air Force. And then there is another uh, Anand Joshi, who uh, has, employs about uh, 50 engineers in his air conditioning company. So all of them have grown big because um, of the commitment and the uh, tenacity that they learned in this sport. This is an interesting story. Someday, probably when in offline mode, I'll give you all the details. I'll even call them to meet you. To hear yeah, their sure, story sir. firsthand. Hmm. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So you tell me, sir, I am available once a week. Usually I'm uh, busy corporate uh, doing corporate training. What we will do is um, we will have once a week, say in the evenings or something, <laughs> Wednesday or something, midweek, or uh, we will let the children decide, students decide, and uh, a convenient time. And I'll be available. I'll try and be available whenever that is there because this is uh, something that I love to do. And I would like to give back to my college. Thank I you, hope sir. this answers your question, Professor. Yeah, sure. yes, 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 sir. yes. Sir. Even students will take note of it and probably will surely have an interaction. Yeah, so a couple of things that I have in mind is one is to ha understand the rowing technique. That's the first thing that we do. Then we do what is called as uh, the rigging of the boat, which is important. They need to understand because their performance depends on the boat. They need to understand the finer points of it. That's the second thing. And the third thing that I would like to work with them is if you have if you are thinking of uh, going to the next level, maybe a medal at the state or the nationals, then physical fitness. And to be honest, all these people whom I have coached, 
I had a rule that you should not be at the boat club for more than one hour in a day. 30 minutes ka outing, 30 minutes ka land training, go home and study. So it doesn't, it should not affect that's, your that's studies. A, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, that <laughs> is a good suggestion, not more than one hour at the boat club. Yes, because otherwise what happens is they'll work for half an hour, but spend two hours loitering around. And then what happens is boat club is blamed for lack, lack of performance in academics. That's not the right thing to happen, isn't it, sir? <laughs> yeah, any more questions? Yes, if anyone has questions, please do ask. You can also drop it in chat box. Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, as we know that the number of boat clubs in Maharashtra are very few, uh, mm -hmm. roughly speaking, uh, around, uh, it's like a two-digit two number. Mm -hmm. So, uh, also there is a very long procedure for opening new boat clubs. Mm -hmm. So, is there any way that uh, we can uh, use to cut down this long process? Mm -hmm. Could you See, please... The Process. Yeah, I'll tell you what. What happens is uh, Maharashtra Rowing Association has, I think, of present 23 affiliates in eight districts. Now, this number of clubs is larger than all the clubs in the rest of India put together. The second highest number is in Calcutta, where they have uh, four clubs on Rabindra Sarobar. No, nowhere else. And the worst situation is in Chandigarh, where they have uh, the lake club on Sukhna uh, Lake, where uh, through which three states uh, send their teams. The Chandigarh team comes from there, the Haryana team comes from there, and the Punjab team come from there. Already, we are the by way largest association in Maharashtra. Now, this is the first part I would like to ask you. We are trying to in increase the number of clubs. The procedure is not complicated. The procedure is simple. It is just that uh, we need to make it economically viable. The whole problem is not about the procedure, but because the boats are costly, it takes a lot of material resources to start off. We have set very basic minimum uh, requirements. One is you have a boathouse, access to a water body, uh, at least two boats, one a skull and one a sweep boat. I don't think it can get more basic than that. Huh. A we get a lot of people who would want to have associate clubs on paper, uh, which we are not, to be honest with you, which we are not very comfortable. Hmm. As you have all experienced, uh, unlike other clubs where there is a lot of politics that goes on in selections, MRA selections are very transparent and fair. You win a race, you go to the nationals. It's as simple as that. You get my point? So that is also some of the principles that we have adhered to. We have avoided bringing in uh, people uh, who are politicians or whatever. A lot of people are interested in that. We say no, we would prefer rowers to be there. All of us in MRA today are old rowers who have spent a large part of the time actually rowing. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, was I able to answer your question? Uh, yes, sir, definitely, sir. Thank you, sir. If you can send an email to Maharashtra Rowing Association, we'll send you the norms that are required to be followed. And Anybody, anywhere can try and build a club. In fact, uh, last month, some of our COEP alumni, uh, somewhere near uh, um, Baramati, uh, I had visited two places where they are setting up clubs. Next week, I am visiting Shirwal this Saturday 12th, where they have invited me to check out their facility. And one of our COEP alumni is sponsoring a boat club there. So. People are coming forwards and we are looking to uh, increase the numbers also. 
Thank you. That's a very important issue. Yes. Any more yes, questions? Sir. Good question by Vaishnavi. So if anyone has like questions, please do uh, ask. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Can you please tell your name? Yes, sir. Uh, I am Vinay Gadilkar. I am from hmm. third year. OK. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, like the uh, girls to boys ratio in the rowing is not that great. Uh, so how can mm. we improve that number? Uh, that's a good question. And the problem is, uh, you know, the boys to girl ratio or the girl to boy ratio, even in the college is not equal. <laughs> so I understand what happens is we live in a very patriarchal society. Girls are supposed to come home early. There's too many constraints on them. Probably what we could do is if there is if there are girls who want to increase uh, and increase their participation, the college can organize a seminar where I could talk with their parents. Uh, because what happens is once the parents are convinced that uh, girls are not doing anything wrong, they'll support the girls in the sport. Yes, and sir. we have had even Chhatrapati Award winners from our college uh, who were girls. Uh, Suchitra and uh, Suchitra Dani and her sister, both are Chhatrapati Award winners who were from this thing. So yes, we would like to increase, uh, have more girls coming into the sports. Um, and in fact, Maharashtra Rowing Association has one lady member from Royal Connaught Boat Club who is a Dhyanchan Award winner. She has won medals at the Asian levels. So it's not that girls can't perform miracles. Yeah. Hmm. In fact, my own daughter used to row. And for three years, she won. Uh, she was a state uh, gold medal holder. And uh, then she wow. played in three nationals and is a, was a medal winner there too. Now she is, of course, working in Seattle. Yeah. Great, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. Uh, more questions, please do ask. Uh, hello, sir. Am yeah. I audible? Yes, you are. So uh, my question is, uh, since uh, as you said, rowing is a part of Olympics since the 19th century, but hmm. uh, still not gaining the popularity in the society. So why is it so? There are a couple of reasons why it is so. One is it is a costly sport. Secondly, you need to be away from the city where people need to travel. I mean, water bodies are not located right in the heart of the city. That's the second reason. The third reason is uh, it's not really a very spectator sport. So people, um, you know, that is why we are trying to bring in sprint nationals and other events, short, quick, uh, spectacular events. So therefore, that is one challenge that we also face, that it is not popular and therefore getting sponsorships is a difficult thing for us too. So many a times we have to tap into old rowers and they have to to You get my point. But that is certain, these are the constraints all over the world. Uh, like for example, uh, people pay to uh, sit in a stadium where cricket or probably soccer is being played. Hmm? There is no ticket anywhere, including the Olympics, if you want to see the rowing finals. So you just walk in and sit there if you have an accreditation card. So spectators is a challenge that we have been facing, but it's a beautiful sport. There is no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess Sakshi has got her answer. Any more questions? You can also drop it in the chat box. What? Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you not clearly. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me your name. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am Chaitanya. I had doubt that many times, many times rovers, rovers get, injured get injured due to the wrong, due to the wrong style, style of rowing. Hmm. So, so there isn't, there any, isn't ideal any ideal style, style but, uh, but uh, what we can what do, we to, can avoid do to avoid the injury? Yes, there is. What happens is, uh, if not done properly, it can damage your back. So, what, uh, as I mentioned with your professor, we'll have a proper seminar an actual demonstration a lecture come demonstration in the water for you to ensure that your technique is correct uh, we will do that soon once the offline thing is available to us right i hope uh, i get to see you then yes sir yes, sure, yes, sure. sure. Hello, good oh, evening, I sir. This side, uh, evening, Roshan yeah. from TY Instrumentation. Hmm. Uh, sir, I have a doubt that our government has recently declared the uh, sports concerning boat as a tourism sport. Hmm. So, uh, the decision, do you think this favors the uh, sports regarding boats? See, what happens is in any sports, there is a certain element of uh, tourism, like you have those typical pedal boats uh, shaped like a duck or what happens in uh, this lake uh, venna lake in mableshwar right so people do boating for fun that's a different thing rowing as a sport is good and if it is allowed what happens is presently one of our major struggle is to get permission for launching boats in water bodies because all the water bodies are uh, controlled by the irrigation department or uh, now it is called as Maharashtra Jeevan Pradikaran and getting them you know they will say that yeah, this is drinking water then we have to convince them that this is a non-polluting sport it does not involve any fuel or it doesn't pollute the water uh, and all those things it takes time but presently why we are pushing fast forwards is the deputy cm of maharashtra mr ajit pat uh, ajit pawar is the president of maharashtra olympic association and we have we have been in close touch with him to get us this permissions and probably right now things will become easier and uh, with the new things coming up like even the river fund project hopefully we should have a better river in the near future. So yes, you are right. If the Maharashtra government makes these water bodies open, it will also promote the sports. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, we would love to hear some inspirational experiences while you were practicing in COIP and the funny ones will, would also do. <laughs> you know, yes, funny ones. What happens is in those days, uh, the river water was so clean when we were rowing that if we are thirsty, we would just dip our hand in the yeah. river and drink. Today, I yeah. think I would not even want to fall into the river. Yes, uh, you know, touch my finger into that. It, the situation is bad. We need to do something as engineers a little bit more. I have a few projects in mind, uh, multidisciplinary projects, which students can take up for reviving the quality of water in the, this thing. One uh, thing that I remembered was uh, we had got some boats from C uh, CME, those big engine boats which move very fast. Yeah. And huh, and those, uh, you know, all the army officers then were friends also. So once we got that and we made the boat make a U-turn in just front of the COEP uh, wharf. And then on the uh, we uh, jumped tangentially. And it hit <laughs> at a speed of almost eight knots or ten knots. It hit us really hard. And I was, you know, rubbing my body for the 
next week or so. These are some of the experiences. One experience that I had was uh, with the canteen manager Madhu Kambe. There was a flood of the river. Okay. And we said, "Ke chalo apn jaate lad me till Sangam." And we we sat in the punt and went up till the this thing, uh, till the judges bungalow. And but going down was easy. Coming up like was like half an hour, with our full power. You know, it's like. जिंकू कि मरू टाइप सिचुएशन बट वी मैनेज एन वी हेल्ड आर दिस थिंग डोंट प्ले विथ नेचर वी वी हेल्ड आर इयर्स बैडली दैट्स हाउ दिस आर सम ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग एक्सपीरियंसेस आई मीन ऑल ऑफ अस डू सच मिस्टिफ व्हेन वी आर यंग राइट एंड देन वी रिग्रेट एट द ओल्ड एज और लाफ एट देम देयर आर लॉट्स ऑफ सच इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज you know especially when we were there at the asian championship so how good this thing was um you know how powerful rowing is as a sport and the top level athletes have a unimaginable diet the real uh, athletes i mean the top class eat something like 7500 calories in a day the biggest experience the biggest eater that i saw was from south korea in the asian championships when whenever they went for an outing we had kept what was called as a glucose solution and salt solution for them to recover now everybody would come and uh, drink a glass of uh, that solution this guy comes and uh, takes the whole bucket and drinks it so yeah. you know i told my friend oh my god this guy is haranti prakare <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> we need to you know watch him closely so what we did was the day after that we were invited by the governor of rajasthan for a dinner on the amer fort we were taken on the elephants and we sat there and then we had uh, hari prasad chaurasia and bismillah khan and apna zakir hussain live just 5 feet away from us and that was a treat but while eating what happened is uh, you know they had those big big plates for it was a buffet and there were big plates uh, from the they were very old plates from the british times probably they had brought in from there huge big plates and this guy comes and uh, you know he serves himself a lot of chicken then he you know the heap he makes a heap of uh, this thing uh, what do we say bones and throws it away he does it the second time throws it away does it a third time and throws it away and in the fourth plate he is satisfied and then we were like oh my god what's happening <laughs> that was the <laughs> biggest amount my चला पण म्हणतो ना रानटी प्रकार आय हॅव यु नो नेवर एव्हर इन माय लाईफ सीन सच अन एपेटाईट बट दिस इज ऑल बिकॉज यु नो वेन यू आर अ गुड ऍथलीट यू वर्क आउट सो मच यू कन्झ्युम सो मेनी कॅलरीज अँड देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल स्मॉल पीस ऑफ फॅट्स ऑन यू चला आपण मराठीत काटक म्हणतो ना तसला are you all uh, comfortable with marathi or english oh sir uh, or are there some, is there somebody who's not though of course i am comfortable with both the languages so these are some of the experiences that we had and uh, some fun experiences some bad experiences once i remember in 1980 i was rowing in the um, state championships and uh, i was the stroke and there were my team behind me uh, tmbc tarun maratha boat club was there in the this thing in the last 200 meters we were like neck to neck and we had our cox called pradeep ghumre and one of the rowers in that other boat was a slightly senior guy about 30 years at that point of time whose name was aba and my cock suddenly out of the blue shouts hey aba dhapla re <laughs> and 
यु नो वी वर लाईक कंटिन्युअसली रोईंग अँड ही हॅड विस्पर्ड की असलं काहीतरी करणार आहे तुम्ही सोडायचं नाही लक्ष विचलित होऊन द्यायचं नाही वॉट हॅपन डिस दॅट आबा वॉज द बाव अँड हिज होल टीम टर्न अँड दे मिस टू स्टोर्स ऑनेस्टली दिस वॉज नॉट अ फेअर मीन्स बट वी वन बाय हाफ अ बोट लेंथ हाव एव्हर लुकिंग बॅक नाव ॲज अन अंपायर अँड अ रोअर ॲट द सिनियर पोझिशन that was what we would call as an unfair means of winning a race but these are the sort of things that happened in those days gradually the rules became tight and now we ensure that the races are played fairly yeah it was great sir to hear your experiences <laughs> thank you thank you i can go on so yeah. you have to stop me i guess we have a question in the chat box yeah uh, yeah it's from uh, sanjay namdev parge uh, his question is how can i track mra activities can you please state some activities planned in pune okay so what you can do is uh, what is this pargens 19 what's your name uh, whatever what you can do is uh, you can share my number with him i'll share it with we have a group called as uh, rowing friends okay we can add you there we have some of your old uh, secretaries also anybody who is interested in uh, doing uh, understanding what's going on can join that group we have a whatsapp group and you'll be updated of what's happening various activities that are happening hmm yes yes sure sir i'll share your number with him please please do does that answer your question okay anybody else um uh, sir uh, as you uh, said you are the regatta secretary at your time so mm. any suggestion you would like to uh, give to this year's interested participants a uh, one thing that i would like to mention which i was talking to the earlier director also dr anil sir srabudde and before that is what has happened is uh, the focus of the boat club has basically it is a sport it's a competitive sport from there it has moved on to um, you know celebration i mean the focus is regatta having fun आपण उत्सव प्रिय आहोत ना मार यु नो भारतीय माणसं तर अशा सिच्युएशनमध्ये वॉट हॅपन्स इज अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑर्गनायझिंग व्हेरियस ऍक्टिव्हिटीज अँड ऑल दोज व्हेरियस ऍक्टिव्हिटीज अ लॉट ऑफ बोट्स गेट डॅमेज्ड अँड देन सिरियस कॉम्पिटिशन इज हॅम्पर्ड कॅन वी ॲटलिस्ट अवॉइड दॅट यू कॅन हॅव फन but not at the cost of the boats and that is something that we need to take care about right yes sir hmm so any more questions guys i think it's been a long um, hello yeah yeah so yes sir this is suraj suraj patave you might hmm. know me i am the yeah. general secretary Yes sir sir i have heard you were the coach uh, in 90s for cvp students yes sir uh, uh, would you like to share some experience as a coach uh, what happens is uh, coaching in my case involved then as um, you know a lot of intense working and understanding why we are doing whatever we are doing so what happens is it not only builds their physical fitness it builds their intellectual thinking process too and that is when i mentioned that some of my students who are now ceos of their company they learned the analyzing a situation from this process of the sports and i as i mentioned i'll get them to talk to you sometimes hopefully yes sir. and i would like to repeat that process because i have matured since then 30 years uh, since then is a long time to learn and grow and mature and uh, probably you know we can m- make bigger progress with you people 
what i want is just about 20 committed students who will say that i will give 1 hour of my daily schedule for rowing just 1 hour and that's all it is that all that is needed yes sir one experience that i would like to share with you is that in coep before i started coaching we had what was called as the crew system um even today it is so four people come together make a crew and they row and then what start suddenly happens is one of them decides ke nahi mala nahi karaycha mala abhyas karaycha hai and the whole force collapses so what i did was and then somebody or the other starts coming late everybody's time is wasted and so on and so forth so what i did was uh, an experiment we created a squad of 10 people the first four people sit in the four the second two people sit in a pair the next person sits in a skull and so on so what happens is nobody's career or nobody's um, process of uh, sports is destroyed because somebody else made a decision uh, that they want to do something else with their life so this way that is how we were able to reach to the nationals tu nahi ala velavar bazula bas tu nahi aur sahi ha jo principal asto na to tithe apply kela and that is what got us the results and then what we did was your position is not fixed sometimes you are rowing on the right side of the sweep sometimes you are doing left side of the sweep sometimes do you are doing sculling so what happens is your body is balanced you don't tend to lean on one side and uh, you know the quality of the rowing improves through that process okay um let's replicate that and i'm sure we can get comparable results my target is at least one student if we do it for this whole thing for the couple of years we should have at least one student from our uh, college representing india that's a dream that i have yes sir sure hmm with all of you committed to the sports i'm sure we can uh, you know make this dream come true yes sir yes we can uh sir i guess we have one of the last questions here in the chat box uh hmm. it's how you felt when you first time rode the boat in coep i'll put it in one word awesome yeah. <laughs> it was like uh, you know a dream come true and for a long period of time there was a picture of me rowing in a single skull but then uh, somebody removed all the pictures it was a big picture of uh, about a size of 3 uh, feet by 2 feet we had lots of pictures there and uh, but it was an amazing uh, experience yeah uh, what is the driving force behind you while practicing yeah see what happens is all of us want achievements the bigger the goal the higher the satisfaction you know as you have heard about a famous mountaineer called mallory when he was asked by somebody the you know interviewer on the bbc why do you go trekking what do you get out of it it is such a lot of pain you know there is a risk of death and so he says because the mountains are there so you have to ask yourself what you want to and let me tell you all the winners that are there um, you know so many winners i have seen the medal winners at the nationals are all highly successful uh, ceos of their company it's the mediocre who don't who don't do anything neither here nor in class or whatever are the ones who um do this i mean you know sitting in a corner small corner 
uh, at after 40 years of working they are just maybe probably a plant manager you know a factory manager or a plant manager or something like that at a middle management level so this whole thing of competition this whole thing of term teamwork this whole uh, set of skills that you learn lose even losing gracefully and learning from it is what builds you and your career yes sir uh yeah aditi does that answer your question thank you aditi yes anybody else anyone or do we stop here yeah i guess uh, all questions are covered now hmm hmm yeah so let's let's call it a day probably uh, by end of february i hope to meet all of you physically yes yes sure sir it was a really great session sir thank you for being there with us today and for being a part of regatta and enlightening our minds so i guess we are done with the questions uh, and everyone has got their answers everyone are satisfied so moving towards the last part i would like to thank professor mustaba sir for giving us his valuable time and uh, enlightening our knowledge today it was a really helpful session i would also like to thank Mr. B B Ahuja Sir, President of Boat Club, uh, for being there and helping us throughout. I would like to thank Vice President of Boat Club, Dr. N A Hedau Sir, for uh, their valuable presence and guidance as always. Further, I would also like to thank our regatta in charge, Dr. V K Haribakta Sir, for being a part of today's program and having our back as always. So last but not the least I thank all the students for being an amazing audience today uh, and asking very interesting questions I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar and also got to learn a lot So I guess this was it thank you each and everyone for being there today So I declare the program is over Thank you sir thank you so much once again thank you uh, for thank giving you. me a patient hearing and it's a pleasure the pleasure was all mine uh, dr yes, dr would i think like to speak something yes sir yes sir yes, yes, yes. Sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sir i really thanks to you for uh, again once again accepting our invitations and the, all the students around uh, 80 to 90 students 100 100 and 10 sorry 100 and 10 the students those who are Uh, acting, uh, participating in these boat club activities, and of course now this uh, situation is uh, now the offline situations. Since from the 15th uh, Feb, the or uh, offline lectures, they are going to start. But the some students they are um, already starting this boat club activity, and uh, this year we are likely to um, conduct the regatta as in a offline mode. so in this regatta offline mode so we are taking this uh, much more um, help from the your side mra sites so because cop again uh, it is a, uh, one of the members in this mra associations uh, so um, of course so we will take the much more um, help from the your side your sure, teams sir. yes and uh, uh, within a next weeks so we will uh, try to meet Uh, in uh, offline modes and we'll take a certain uh, uh, get together regarding the uh, you as well as your colleagues those who are associated with the uh, boat club activities okay sir thanks thank, thank you thank have a yes, nice sir. day thank yes. you bye bye yes. bye thank you sir